In the last lesson, we learned all about routing within Adonis and a couple of different ways that we can go about keeping our route definitions concise. Today, we're going to take this a step further by covering controllers. Controllers essentially allow us to extract our route handlers outside of our route definitions into their own files. And they also allow us to modularize each file based off of a particular topic. So for example, we could have a user's controller for all of our user actions. We could have a project's controller for all project-based actions. And the same for maybe tasks. So since we have these user routes already defined, let's go ahead and go over how to create a user's controller and then we will extract our route handlers off to that controller for these routes. So let's jump into our terminal. Let's run node ace make colon controller and then we pass in the controller name so we can do user controller. And I'm doing user controller here because I wanna point out something nice that Adonis does for us. So whenever I press enter on this, what Adonis will do is instead of creating a file user controller, it's going to create a controller called users controller. It's gonna pluralize it. And it does that because the controller is in charge of all of our users. And the pluralization and singularization of names is something Adonis does throughout. So whenever we get through to our database integration, we'll see that it will do the same for our table names as well as models. Table names will be plural because they are like controllers in charge of all entities within that table. And model names will be singular because they are essentially in charge of a single entity. So let's go ahead and hit enter on this so that we can create our controller and you'll see it created app controllers HTTP users controller. And this is where all of our controllers will reside within Adonis. So if we head over to our users controller, we should expect to see an empty users controller class and a commented out import for our HTTP context contract. So first things first, we can go ahead and uncomment out our HTTP context contract import because we'll be making use of it. We can head back to our routes TS definitions file and we can start grabbing our route definitions. We'll start with the index route just to show that this will work appropriately and how we can tell our route definition which controller and which method within the controller to use for this route. So let's go ahead and copy out our route handler for our user's index path head back to our user's controller file and paste that route handler in. We're gonna want to make this a public function and we're also gonna wanna give it a name. So we will just call this index since it is the user's index path and then get rid of the arrow for the old arrow function. And that should now be a valid class method. So we can go ahead and give that a save. Let's head back to our routes TS file. And now the way that we tell our route that we want to use the user's controller index method is by passing in a dot syntax string. So, so it's gonna be a string. And then essentially we just need to act like we are referencing an object property within the string. So it's gonna be users controller dot the method that we wanna run. So it's gonna be index. And we can go ahead and save this and start our server up and give it a test to see that it works. Go ahead and open our server head over to the users page and you can see it's passing in our users page appropriately so we can head back into our route definition file and do the same for the remainder of our routes so let's copy out the route handler for our user show page paste that in we want to make this public as well and give it a name of show and get rid of the arrow and then we'll do the same for post And then I'll just copy this one since it's close enough to the remainder. We'll have delete. We'll have another one for store. We'll have another one for create. This was one that we do not have defined within our routes. And then we'll have one more called edit. And this is another one that we don't already have defined within our routes. So we can go ahead and give this a save, head back to our route file. And now we can finish off the route definition to controller binding. So users controller dot show, users controller dot store, users controller dot update, and then users controller dot. Actually, I believe this needs to be called destroy. So let's head back to our users controller and change the name of that to destroy as well. And then we have a couple of new methods, create and edit that we wanna create routes for. So we can go ahead and just copy one of these and these will be gets. So this will be users new and then one more for edit. And this one will be users slash colon ID slash edit. And then we wanna get rid of the users prefix for both of these since we are doing that in the group. So go ahead and give that a save. And then we also need to change the controller method that's going to run for these routes. So this will be create, the name will be create as well. And then for edit, this one will be edit and the name will be edit as well here. 
So we can go ahead and give that a save and we can also get rid of our HTTP context contract import since we're no longer using that within a route definition file. Head back to our browser, refresh the page and we should see that everything's working okay for our user's path. We can pass in some non-existent ID to see that we are getting back our JSON response for that path as well. So everything appears to be working so far. And now there's one thing that we skipped within the routes lesson that I do want to take the time to cover here. Since we are now using controllers, we can appropriately use a resource route definition. So what a resource route definition is, is essentially what we have defined right here. So it is an index page, show, create, store, edit, update, and destroy, except it's all defined within one line on a resource property. So for example, we could define the exact same that we have here as route.resource. We're gonna pass in the resource name, so this is going to be for our users, and we're gonna pass in the controller that's going to handle this resource, which will be the users controller. And now what we have done in this single line is define all of these individually defined routes in one go. So we can comment this out, give our route definition file a save, head back to our browser, refresh, and we can see everything's working just the same as before. Once more, we can head into our terminal, stop our server, and we can run node ace list routes, and you'll see all of the route definitions that we have defined within our routes file. So not only can you see the routes that are defined, but you can see how they're being handled, any middleware that's attached to them, the name that they're using, and if you're using subdomains, which subdomain they are under. So why I wanted to run this was just to show you that this route.resource appropriately defines all of the same things that we have already defined ourselves, just within a much shorter syntax. In addition to just defining our resource, we can also do a couple of other things. So we could define middleware to all of our resource paths in one go, the same as if all of these routes were in a group. So the way that we would do that is just chaining off of our resource, the middleware method. And then we could do the same for naming. So we could do as, and what this will do is instead of naming it users dot, it will name it whatever we pass in this method and it will prefix that with all of the routes. So it will be whatever we pass in. So maybe test.index, test.show, test.create, and so on. Two more things that I wanna cover in this lesson before we end is namespacing and services. So we'll start with services since it will be nice and quick. So within Adonis, there's no ace CLI command to create a service. However, they are relatively easy to create on our own. Let's just create a new file within our app directory. We'll name these folder for this services, and we will name this users service.ts. Within here, we just need to define a class called users service and then at the end of the file we can just export default users service you can also export this straight off of your class definition as well if you like and then within here just for test purposes let's define a public static static so that we don't need to create a new instance of user service in order to use this method test and then all that we're going to do here is just return back a string of test so we can define the return for this as a string and give this a save, head back to our user's controller, and then we'll just tack this onto our JSON response so it'll be nice and easy to view and see what's happening. So all that we need to do is import our user service. So we can do const test equals users service. We can use auto import there to import that. And we can run dot test. And then we can just pass this in as our user ID for right now. Give this a save, start our server back up jump back into our browser and let's head back over to our users and then some ID path. And you can see that we're getting back user ID test. So our service is working correctly. We could also make tests just a property directly off of our user service. So we could do public test string equals test and that would be perfectly valid as well. We just would not reference it as a method but instead just a property. And beyond that, this is really just a class. So we could do whatever we need to do within here that is applicable within a class. So lastly in this lesson, let's cover namespacing. So what namespacing does is it allows us to define which particular namespace we want to use for our controller within the controller's HTTP directory. So what I'm going to do is comment out our resource route definition and uncomment all of our individual route definitions. And then we're just going to copy users controller. So let's copy this and let's create a new directory under HTTP and we'll just call this users. And then let's paste the users controller within here. So now essentially what we've done here is we've copied our users controller and we pasted it under a new namespace. Now namespaces can be defined in any way that you want. So it could be app users controller HTTP and then we could have just app controllers HTTP. This is my own personal preferred method is just defining the namespace within the HTTP directory. So you do what's appropriate for you and your project. And just so we're able to tell whether or not we're using our user's namespace user controller or our user's controller, I'm going to change the user's namespace user's controller index method from returning a view 
to returning a JSON response. So instead of view here, we're going to have response. And let's just return response.json user namespace true. So we could save that, head back to our route definition file, and then chained off of our user's index route, we can define a namespace. And then all that we need to do here is define the full namespace path starting from app. So we could do app controllers HTTP users give this a save, head back into our browser. And now instead of getting back a page with our user's heading on it, if, if we head to the user's index page, what we should see is a JSON response with user's namespace true. And that's how we could decipher that we are indeed using the user's namespace for this route. If we were to comment this namespace out, head back and refresh, we'll get that user's page. So namespaces are just another way that you can modularize and keep your code base clean. So say that maybe you have an admin section of your website, you could do an admin namespace, or you could have a namespace particular for authentication. And then just like we added the namespace for our users index path, we could also do the exact same for our resource definition. The difference here is this will apply for all paths within this resource. So we could define a namespace of the exact same. The only difference between these two is that now for all of our resource routes, which are all of these routes, the user's namespace is going to get used for all of these. So if we save this, head back into our browser, what we should see here is our JSON response again. And we can see that is working. So now in the next lesson, we're gonna start with our database integration by adding Lucid to our project.